man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. All right. Okay, I, uh, I stopped the camera probably at about the wrong time because uh, you missed a lot of action there. But uh, this here is a northern leopard frog. And uh, she gave me quite the run. They are not easy to catch even with a net. Not 100% sure it's a female, but they tend to have larger thumbs if they're a male. And this one's got smaller ones. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a female. We'll take a look. Then we'll have her on her way. Okay, I got some uh, pond water, so she can hopefully be a little bit comfortable while we check her out. I hope this goes well. I don't really feel like trying to catch her again. Success. Okay, so yes, northern leopard frog. Rana papians, pipians. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. These ones are crazy to catch. I mean, I have done it before, and I've done it with my hands before, but I'd say it's like a one in eight chance if I'm going by hand. Glad I brought the net this time. They tend to get away from predators or anything else that startles them with a very long leap, and they might do one or two or three in a row. This makes them pretty elusive. If you miss on that first swipe, you're probably not gonna catch one. And they can jump pretty darn far too. They are swift. I would not be surprised if a three meter distance is something that these guys could easily make. I think I've seen three meters before out of them. They tend to be green or brown or anywhere in between. They can be a greenish brown, a brown that seems to be fading to green in certain parts. And they definitely have these dark spots all over them. They're usually kind of large, about the size of what their eye would be, though of course that's not perfect. There's a little bit of variation in the size of the spots. And another spotted frog in this same vicinity here in the Great Lakes area is the pickerel frog. The pickerel frog has also dark spots and can be of similar color. There's always just two distinct rows of the pickerel frog's spots. Unlike the northern leopard frog where there might be what seems like two rows, but there also will be one or two or three spots just kind of not fitting to that conformity of two rows. There also tends to be a spot on each eye which she has also here, usually more towards the center of the head, and then also a spot on the nose. But also, the pickerel frog tends to have that too. But definitely this, on at least this specimen, the spot that's in the middle of those two rows totally indicates to me this is a northern leopard frog, not a pickerel frog. There's also a white line, usually from the nose to the shoulder, and we can see a pretty distinct white line of that here on this specimen. And then their dorsolateral folds are also a very light color, usually a very light tan color. Some might call that eggshell. This frog, though, is incredibly common. It has a very wide distribution. Definitely everywhere in the Great Lakes area, well up into Canada. It goes, as long as you're north of Pennsylvania, it goes throughout the East Coast. It's throughout pretty much everywhere except for the most southern parts of the Midwest. And it's also throughout the Rocky Mountain areas, especially places, of course, that are forested and have moisture for them. Even in some western states like Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona. It's a very common frog. They tend, of course, to like moist areas. Hey, it's a frog. But it can survive drier conditions by absorbing certain amounts of moisture just from the soil or especially like dew in the morning. It can tolerate a certain amount of dryness. It spends its winters in some permanent types of uh, ponds or lakes and will usually like bury itself a little bit down in some of the silt near the bottom. And then in the spring when they come out, they'll find some shallow areas or maybe even different shallower temporary ponds to both breed and lay their eggs. Females can lay anywhere from around 300 to upwards of five or even 6,000 eggs at a time. Sometimes all in one batch, though usually the higher the numbers, the more she's gonna spread those around. And here's what I think is the really cool part. Those eggs, depending upon the temperature, can take anywhere from 20 days to hatch or even as short as four days to hatch when the conditions are much warmer. 
the chemistry just runs faster, and in four days they can go from an egg to being a hatched out tadpole. I think that's pretty sweet. The northern leopard frog eats pretty much what you'd expect it would eat. Plenty of invertebrates, worms, slugs, but also plenty of insect life. But the larger ones will actually sometimes eat even smaller frogs and other amphibians, like the chorus frog or the spring peeper. This is usually the larger adults that are able to do this, but they'll go for it. The chorus of the northern leopard frog is kind of like a snoring sound. Here, take a listen. As far as their lifespan goes and reproductive capabilities, once it's no longer a tadpole and has reached an adult stage, it's still not sexually mature yet until about one to three years. Depends upon how much it's eating and its own personal development. So sexually mature, one to three years, and then its lifespan can be up to even nine years. But we wouldn't expect most natural specimens out there in the wild to make it to nine years. Probably something's going to take them out sooner than that. But a lifespan of five to six years would not be uncommon. Something interesting about this species as well is that it's very common and plentiful, but in the 1960s and 1970s, there were some sharp declines in certain pocket populations throughout its range. And people are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. There's a lot of ideas out there, but there's no certainty yet as to what really occurred. Some popular ideas, though, were the use of different pesticides in those regions. Also, though, the eggs are pretty sensitive to pH changes. So while that could have been from pesticides as well, could have been from a number of things, including just perhaps a lot of acid rain in a certain area and plenty of rainfall, that could have changed the pH to cause the eggs to not develop properly. It's still somewhat of a mystery. What we do know, though, is that these pocket populations, and plenty of them, had some massive declines, and yet nowadays it seems that the northern leopard frog has recovered from that. There's some areas where the recovery hasn't quite happened, but in plenty of other areas it has which shows that when it comes to its reproductive capabilities, it's able to replenish its population due to that large amount of eggs that the female can lay, but then also due to the sexual maturity sometimes only taking as little as one year. All right, so the northern leopard frog. Excellent find today, and uh, we're going to send her off on her way. Thanks for checking out this episode of HerbQuest. I'm Rich Lund. Here to remind you, please always leave nature as good or better than you found it. Catch you next time.